before Apollo 7, which was, of course, the first manned flight in the Apollo program, there was a lot of concern about how much difficulty we would have moving around inside the spacecraft under weightless conditions. Intravehicular activity, this was called, or IVA for short. We hadn't had experience with this before because Mercury and Gemini spacecraft were simply too small. It quickly became apparent that we would have no difficulty whatever. It was quite possible to move around at will. Almost automatically, we even began taking advantage of the phenomenon of weightlessness. Here, for example, I'm putting on a communications lead, and I just stow it momentarily in midair, so to speak. This was a useful technique for handling anything but very small objects. Those tended to drift off and get lost. In working inside the spacecraft, we found that there was no need for elaborate arrangements for restraining ourselves in particular positions. Although we had foot restraints at the navigation station, for instance, I was able to maintain a very stable position using only two small handholds. We also found that in operations such as changing out a lithium hydroxide canister, we could apply just about as much force as we could on the ground, as long as we could get a toehold or a handhold. Many people had anticipated that we would need extensive aids for this sort of operation, but apparently this will not be needed to any great degree on future flights. It is also easier to get into and out of small and constricting spaces. Here I am getting ready to enter the sleep station under the right couch. There's just barely room for your body with a couple inches to spare. On the ground it's a bit of a struggle to worm your way in there. Yet in the weightless state, it's very easy to get in and out of the sleep station. Another aspect is that it really doesn't matter what is up and what is down. Although I'm inverted here, for instance, there's no sense of disorientation or confusion. Walt Cunningham, who is something of a gymnast, could even tumble inside the spacecraft without disorientation and was somewhat safer than working out on a trampoline or a high bar on the ground. Even if we bumped into something on occasion, we didn't hit it hard enough to either damage the spacecraft or hurt ourselves. Wally Sherrod didn't even have to bother with the restraint belt when he was using the exercise device, a means of maintaining muscle tone. The freedom to move around was also important physiologically. Post-flight medical measurements indicated that our calcium loss was less than might have been anticipated, and this was attributed, at least in part, to our intravehicular activity. As the mission progressed, we grew increasingly accustomed to weightlessness. We had no problems at all in preparing meals, for instance. We could hold the food bags in place with Velcro patches, or often simply suspend a bag until we were ready for it. We stumbled onto all sorts of places for storing things temporarily. The slightest friction seemed to keep anything in place. Here we have empty food bags stowed above the gray panel in the navigator station. This was a temporary stowage box which was provided on board the spacecraft. We used it to store our toothbrushes and our communications helmets. The water gun used in preparing food stayed in place if we put it in switch wickets. That kept it from floating about but still kept it readily available. We also found ways to cope with problems we wouldn't normally experience on the ground. Sometimes we were able to remove excess gas from our food by shaking the bags until the bubbles collected all at one end. We could then open the bag and let the gas escape without spilling the food. In general then, we experienced no difficulties whatever living and working aboard Apollo 7. One reason there had been concern was that Gemini crew members had experienced considerable exhaustion while moving about outside their spacecraft. 
but this was apparently because they were working against fully inflated pressure garments, which tend to be rather rigid. But under the conditions we found in Apollo 7, the state of being weightless actually enhanced many of our abilities. It was almost as if we had found a new freedom.